after a big loss last week we gotta come out this week against number five notre dame and absolutely so what we can do with licks is the wildcat opening possession terrence williams says give me the ball one time coach and watch what i do all the way to the house are you kidding me big third and five here trying to get the pressure Christoph Houston gets absolutely stiff on. They don't care about his award. Oh my God, we're gonna see another potential rushing touchdown here as James Mitchell is able to bring him down. But Holloway gets 43. Notre Dame coming out here with five wide. Obviously gonna be a passing situation. And Robinson's gonna make a little bit of an adjustment here. Throws out to the flats, kind of. We're gonna see Jocks get all the way down. A shackle for Brumps him out after 11. All right, guys, so they gotta make a stop on second and goal. They throw one out to the tight end and the big tight end is gonna find himself in the end zone. Notre Dame's tying it up. Fullwood was told by Coach Mervin Mervin, both in person and in the press, that he has the full confidence of this team. He has just got to line up, do what he does best, and dominate for this team. And he's doing it right now. Fullwood coming out here, a little gas, to running around a little bit here. Sees the pressure. He's rolling out. He's got a guy, throws it on the run. That's an absolute dot. And Renee drops that one. Fullwood loves a good tight end, but Renee is not looking like one there. Pre-game, Aiden Bailey was trying to kick a couple of these shots from this deep, and they weren't going in. They were a little bit too 50-50 for Coach Mervin McMervin's liking, so he's coming back out here looking for something big. He's got a guy scrambling out to the right. He's going to see Wilson. They say he's not in. We would love to get a challenge on that. That is a beautiful ball. We don't get a look at Wilson's feet, but that looked like it was good from here. It's rare to see this happen, but Coach Mervin McMervin was not happy with that. He thinks his guy had one foot down at least. Wilson has been so good this season. Nope. He just didn't get the foot down. It looked like it was close in a situation where we had Olsen to go and see, but that's not getting overturned. There's obviously a lot of uncertainty around the coaching staff, and one thing we do know is for sure is that this defense will absolutely have a different style that it looks at next year because what's going on right now has not been good. Spence Nowinski has not been that guy. Big play here, third and short. Notre Dame. Picks up the pressure brilliantly. Christoph Houston demolishes Harris. Robinson still has not thrown an incomplete pass on the afternoon. He throws one here, though. It's completed, but not good news for him. It goes to Christoph Houston. Missed a terrible tackle earlier. He got stiff arm to the ground, but this time he steps up, makes a big play, and Cascade Val Valley has the ball right back. Forward way back, loses sight of some of his guys, sees one, throws it, and 42 gets in there again. Kyle Thompson's been an animal today. See if they can get that first down. He throws one, and it's Mr. McDonald, former QB turned wide receiver, picks up the biggest grab of the game. Something to note here is Wilson needs about 102 yards to have the most receiving yards in a season in Cascade Valley history. But he can't get a ball when forwards get in blitz like that. Big opportunity here for Aiden Bailey. Got this one off. This one looks like it has the distance. It is right down the middle. We're going to take a 10-7 lead, and hopefully we do not relinquish this at all. Notre Dame is driving down the field at will at this point. First and 10 inside the 30. Robinson is looking to get his guys something here. He's got a lot of time. He throws one and James Mitchell completely oblivious, doesn't put his hands up, and OJ Robinson is going to take the lead for Notre Dame just like that. Woods had a really tough time passing, only about 40% completion rate at the F. Absolute point that he needs to get this ball away. He's able to run this one and picks up about 15. Second and short, Wilson motion in the backfield. Comes around for fake jet sweep. Right there, a one-handed grab by Mikel Smith. What a grab. Keeping things going. Nice little play action fake here. You see him rowing. Going forward, throws one. It's nearly picked and almost caught at the same time. A safety just had him spooked a little bit. Adjustment here. The safety was blitzing. Probably wouldn't have been good. He throws one and luckily goes into the dirt. Notre Dame looking to extend their lead. They got a lead of four. Trying to make that a whole lot more right now. Holman can't really get back there. Christoph Houston misses the tackles. Our guys just cannot wrap up when we need them to. Our guys needing to play smart here. They leave a huge gap. Notre Dame. It's Robinson yet again. Things that were working, nowhere close. Fullwood throws one. It's picked. It's not even close. This team is just, this is not the Cascade Valley we're used to seeing. First down for Notre Dame. Their quarterback's going to run. Rutledge and company are trying to get this man down. Finally bring him down for a loss of two. Things are not going Cascade Valley's way. They just cannot figure out how to stop this quarterback, but they bring him down for the second sack of the drive, which is a positive. They need something big here. They go out to the edge. What a throw, and Harris is going to stay in bounds, cutting on a dime, and they're in the first and goal. Watching the running back out of the backfield. They throw out here to the flats, and that might be the weirdest, longest completion of all time. And Notre Dame goes up nearly 18. Some people would consider this a must-score drive. Coach Mervin, Mervin definitely does. It's a lot of time here. Forward sees a guy, throws it deep. He's got his guy in Fernie, and Fernie's going to be down inside the 15. This team needed a little verticality, and good Lord, did they get some right there. Fullwood 
out here throws when he's got mcdonald in the back of the end zone and cascade valley is back on the board with a big touchdown to cut this lead potentially to 11. we're trying to get a little bit of pressure on robinson doesn't look like it's gonna happen we got a couple of guys there that one is batted away we're gonna go into halftime down 11. this could be absolutely way worse our office has struggled but we're seeing some life finally come in and Notre dame while they're up they gotta be scared Welcome back to the Cascade Valley Halftime Show. This is brought to you by Advanced GG. And did you know that I have my own special drink? It's sugar-free, helps your reaction time, boosts your mind a little bit, it helps you dominate in your game. Whether you're playing Madden, your favorite shooter, a puzzle gamer, Viva Pinata, whatever it is, it'll keep you locked in. Just use code GGB, save a little bit, and check out my strawberry lemonade flavor. As we hit this halftime show, I just want to point out very quickly, for no particular reason, that our defensive coordinator, Spence Lewinsky, is more than likely probably not coming back to Cascade Valley next year, based off his drops. Security. Now, I do want to cover the award winners a little bit. We see Antonio Keys winning the Heisen with Williams finishing third. From an All-American standpoint, you see Keys as the number one quarterback. We see Terrence Williams taking the number one running back. You'd love to see that. Uh, as we move our way down, we're also going to see Wesley Gaines starting at center. Uh, we keep moving down. We're going to see Tony Rutledge at left end. The senior getting a big award before he ends up leaving Cascade Valley, going to the NFL. On defense, we continue here with Isaiah Holman, a left outside linebacker. Uh, Christoph Houston, the true freshman and middle linebacker. A lot of you guys hated on that move, but it ended up paying off. We see Kendall Johnson taking uh, the top corner spot. We're also going to see James Mitchell. Probably could have been the top corner, but ended up getting burnt too much. Uh, Demel Hill and Jonas Shackelford locking down both safety spots as well. On the second team, Warren Forward as a true freshman gets that nod as starting quarterback. Love to see that. Would have seen the number one, but again, the end of the season didn't really work out in his favor as much. As we continue down, nobody else really on offense. We find ourselves down here with Amir Carson, a defensive tackle. Uh, and then we push down, we see Jalen Clark, the first time we've really had a returner as an All-American. You'd love to see that too. Forward continues getting all freshman NCAA honors. Uh, pushing down through here as well. We should have, I believe, one more. We do. We have two more, three more. Uh, we have Christoph Houston. We have Kendall Johnson. And we're going to have our boy, Mr. DJ Montellus. And then obviously for the Big team first, for the Big Ten first team, we're going to clean up here. Fullwood, Williams, Fernie gets on there. You know he loves a good tight end. We're going to see Gaines out here as well. Rutledge, Carson, Holman, Christoph Houston, Kendall Johnson, Mitchell, Demel Hill, and Shackelford with Clark getting there. Returner. And then in the second team, Hunter Romero, our arch nemesis over there in Nebraska. We're going to see James Jackson and Derek Simpson get on that list. Um, and then we're also going to finish out with George Fry and Jaquez Ness and the kicker, Aiden Bailey. Individual award winners, Antonio Keyes gets the Maxwell Award with forward finishing 10th. The Walter Cam goes to Keyes as well. We see Williams finish at 4th. The Bednarik goes to Christoph Houston as a true freshman winning that award is huge with Shackelford second and Demel Hill sixth. Nagurski's going to go uh, to McKivis over there from Clemson, but we see Houston finishing second there. The O'Brien keys racks that up as well with forward at fifth. The Walker goes to Terrence Williams. Love to see him clean up with a big award there. He's had a monster year with 24 touchdowns plus whatever he gets in today's game. Litnikoff, we're going to see that go to Joe Morton out of Tennessee. The Mackey goes to Jeremy Youngblood of Georgia. We see the Outland go to Gibson of Clemson. Uh, the Remington goes to Wesley Gaines of Cascade Valley. The Lombardi goes to Tony Rutledge. Uh, you're going to see your best linebacker go to Christoph Houston again, killing it out there. Your Thorpe Award goes to Shackelford. Your Groza Award goes to Max Holt out of Texas. Your Guy Award goes to Chris Harper. We see Montellas get a little bit of love there at ninth. And then your best returner, Jalen Clark, the first time in school history you've won that award. You'd love to see it. One thing for you to keep your mind on as well, we talked about it a little bit in the beginning of the video, but Tom Baker holds the record for most receiving yards in a season with 1,072. But look where Wilson is before this game started. Wilson is sitting at 970. If I did my math correctly, he's 102 receiving yards from tying the record, needing 103 to break it. It's possible in this game. We'll see, though. Now, as we're getting things away against Notre Dame, I want to show you guys the college football playoff ranking. It's Clemson versus Alabama, Texas versus Miami. You'll find out who wins it all in the next episode. It's a big third and ten. They go with the halfback screen, though. We got guys all over that. They're going to be way out of field goal range. This ball should be coming back to us. Williams is going to keep on to it. Williams, again, has plenty of room here. And Terrence Williams, are you kidding me? Running the Wildcat the rest of the game. This man is literally on one, carrying this team, and he's out after 51 yards. What a run. We do not want to overuse the Wildcat because they obviously could catch on to it. But, man, they are struggling at this point. We're doing anything with it. Williams again gets some great blocking here. Trying to get himself in the end zone. He's not going to be able to get there. He's out at the 10-yard line. We also find out that Williams now has a strained pectoral muscle. He's out two quarters, which means he's gone for the rest of the game. So he's done everything he can. It's up to us to do the rest. And Joe Kendrick comes in with a big three-yard rush. That's going to put this game back within reach. Now, we do get an opportunity here. They say that he's a minor injury. Obviously, he, well, he could come back potentially later, but he's not going to be able to come back in. His injury risk is high. This is his last chance at playing for a big game. We want him to play in his own terms. We're saying, Williams, you're coming back in. So Williams, strain back to all, gets a quarter zone shot, and he's right back in this game. 
He gets the first carry. He trips a little bit, but still gets two. Third and short. And Cascade Valley get the conversion here. Forward pushes forward, and he's got enough. He got stopped early on the third down, but this time he fights for his bread. They say forward actually was hurt on that play, so forward comes out. A little bit of a late hit, in my opinion. They didn't call it. We weren't expecting to see Ben in. Williams is trying to move around. He is a breaking attack. Are you kidding me? What a run to keep this drive alive. Wilson slides over. We hand it off to Williams instead, and Williams gets another five yard gain. Forward still gas. He's going to fake this handoff here to Williams. Cuts up the middle of the field, and Fullwood is down at the one yard line. I thought he was in. Coach Mervin Mervis is lining up again. Go to the left this time, and this time Fullwood is going to be in. Bruce Anglin all is going to now give Cascade Valley the lead. But if they go for two here, they make it a field goal distance. Just as we imagine, Fullwood and company lining back up here to try to make it a field goal. That one is another Wilson, and Matt Wilson catches that one, holds it even though he got absolutely blasted in the ribs. Pause if needed, and Cascade Valley up top by three. The defense is doing their best to hold steady here. They got a big third and 15. Not a lot of time left here in the third. Great coverage, and what a big hit. Robinson gets hit as he throws that when he has four passing touchdowns, but he's not getting one there. Starting quarterback injured, starting running back injured, both around here hobbling around, trying to make this work. And we're seeing Williams again, a big game. He hasn't had one like this in a while, but he fumbles. He fumbled last game, he fumbles again here, but Derek Simpson, the offensive lineman, is gonna pick it up. That same situation happened against the LSU game, and that's ultimately what led us not getting that victory out there, but look at Warren Fullwood. Decapitated, probably should have slid, but we'll take the 16. Notre Dame has their backs against the wall at the moment. Forward sees his guy is Mikhail Smith. He's in the end zone 11 yards later. What a toe tap to extend this lead for Cascade Valley, pushing it to about to be 10. This game has been incredible. Notre Dame right now is in chuck it mode where they got to be throwing this rock a whole lot at this point. Robinson, though, feeling the pressure. George Fry apparently does not bother him at all, and neither does anyone on our defense as he gets 11. Still plenty of time in this game, though. It's only a 10-point game. Got to be careful here, but look at Rutledge get to the edge and make sure they get dropped for a loss. One of the biggest plays of the game here in third and seven. George Fry in pretty good coverage at argue right now, but they leave a big hole as Kendall Johnson has to step up, and Mikkel Coleman gets a 20-yard grab because of it. We're just playing pass pretty much every single down right now. They go with the Robbie Cousin, and we get absolutely exploited. A huge hit, but Holloway picks up another big game. Got to be close to 100 in the game. A battle in this game is lived up to every single ex expectation, I would argue. The run game for Notre Dame has been a big reason why, and Switzer forced out of bounds, but he gets 18 in the inside the five. Can our guys keep their defense going right now? Robinson looking for something. Holman nearly forces a fumble, but Robinson's able to hold back onto it. Christoph Houston's going to have to be in coverage right now, which scares us just a little bit. Robbins is going to try to run, but our guys are ready. What another big sack. This defense is stepping up huge. Amir Carson getting his first sack of the afternoon. Pretty quiet for the most part, only three tackles, but he's just been getting pressure every single time that he possibly can. This kick is up, and it is good for Notre Dame. That is a seven-point lead now. Time to chew the clock and get some more points on the board for Cascade Valley. Chewing the clock. We have it to about 3.30. Trying to catch him off guard with the halfback screen. Fullwood gets the dump off here to Williams, and Williams might have had some daylight there, but he's wrapped up by the legs at 11. Hit in the two-minute mark. They're staying on forward. They do not want forward to run, but Terrence Williams gets the eight yards we need for yet another first down, and they use the timeout. Notre Dame down to their final timeout with a minute 53 on the clock. We're not out of the woods yet, but again, if we keep pushing forward like this, we can be. Down 18 points. Cascade Valley is going to come back in a huge way against Notre Dame to show that they are a top team in the nation. I think we still should have been in the college football playoff, but you know what? They didn't think we should be. We have the best recruiting class in the nation. We have the best young group of players in the nation on offense and on defense. With all these guys coming in, you better be worried about Cascade Valley. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys in the next one.